Good afternoon, everyone. I figure I have about 20 minutes of quality attention time before your food starts to digest. <laughs> um, I'm very pleased to be in Wood Buffalo. And is the, oh, he told me to use this. Oh, I should use this mic too? Oh, sorry. Yep. Oh, OK. <laughs> sorry, a little mic confusion here. <laughs> um, I, anyway, I was saying I'm very pleased to be in the Wood Buffalo region and very pleased to be speaking to you today about the standards program. Imagine Canada was invited to engage in the Social Prosperity Wood Buffalo project largely because our standards program can help support your uh, capacity building activities uh, in the areas covered by the standards. Is this okay? I feel like my voice is... it's okay? Uh, the button's not working. Do I have to point it at something? Okay, thanks. Will it? No, she told me not to press that one. It might be turned off. In which case, it's okay. Okay. So we should press the red button? Okay. I guess we should. It. This is, of course, I'm the only one it didn't work for, unfortunately. Oh, that's always the way. Well, I can just sit there. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Thanks. No, that's okay. Um, I guess I'll stop ineffectively pressing the button. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Tanya. Uh, okay. So the things that I'm going to cover today is basically I'm going to cover an overview of the standards program. Um, I'm going to try and focus mainly on the accreditation process and the capacity building activities around the accreditation process. I think that's what you'll most be interested in. Uh, but I'm also going to talk a little bit about the pilot and our recent public launch. And, uh, and then at the end of the presentation, talk a little bit about the support provided by Social Prosperity Wood Buffalo, which you've already heard people talk a little bit about for organizations uh, that are interested in, in uh, working towards accreditation. Thanks. Uh, so just to give you a sense of the mission and goals of the organization, uh, or of the standards program, uh, they were developed by the Standards Council. And the Standards Council is an independent uh, body that oversees the program. The uh, Imagine Canada Board is legally responsible for the program, but uh, the Standards Council, which is made up of uh, a number of sector representatives, um, some from among uh, the founding members of the program, and the founding members of the program are listed on our website. They're uh, organizations who put some money on the table a couple of years ago to help seed the development of the program, and they also rolled up their sleeves and spent literally hundreds of hours of helping to shape uh, and design the program. So the, they, and they're the ones who developed the mission and goals uh, for the organization, the Standards Council, which has, again, some founding members as well as uh, a few uh, nominees from Imagine Canada's board. Uh, so the mission is to build excellence within Canada's charities and nonprofits through common standards of practice and to strengthen confidence in the sector. And uh, one of the goals is to help Canadian charities and nonprofits improve their practices in the five foundational areas of the standards. And I will be talking about those areas in a bit more detail. Uh, but they are board governance, financial accountability, ethical fundraising, staff management, and volunteer involvement. Some of these things that you've heard other people talk about and are embedded within the Social Prosperity Wood Buffalo project. So it's quite, there's a lot of synergies here. Uh, also to increase the transparency of charities and nonprofits in these, in these foundational areas and uh, recognize organizations that meet the standards. Now that would be through uh, use of the accreditation trust mark, which I'll talk about a little bit more uh, at the end of the presentation. And of course, to strengthen public confidence, not just in the charities and nonprofits that are participating in the program, but in the uh, sector as a whole. Thanks. Uh, so the five content areas are, uh, as I mentioned, the board governance, financial accountability, fundraising, staff management, and volunteer involvement. There are 73 standards in these areas. And uh, I believe you received the uh, standards handbook in your packages, looks like this. 
So the standard, the handbook, I mean, it's not necessarily helpful for me to hold it up here like this, but if you, if you pull it out of your package, you'll see that uh, it gives you an overview of the accreditation process, uh, the different levels, which I'll talk about in a moment, the fees for the program, and most importantly, the standards are all listed here in the five different areas, including the, uh, the requirements that um, uh, organizations need to provide uh, to demonstrate that they're in compliance with the standards or that they've met the standards. So those, uh, for instance, on page four, you'll see standard A1 in the, uh, the uh, white row is the standard and the shaded row underneath is the evidence that an organization would need to provide to demonstrate that they've met the standard. This is not the application form, by the way. It's an online application form. Uh, but this is an excellent tool that you can use, regardless of your intention to go through the accreditation process, to, to compare your current practices against these standards. Um, and, I, and I suggest you, you know, take a look at it and use it as a bit of a, a self-assessment. Uh, from what I've seen and heard last night at the awards show and, and uh, again here today, a, a lot of organizations are probably in pretty good shape uh, in, the standard, in, in, in meeting these standards already. Uh, but I'd be interested to hear uh, your thoughts. If you have a chance to go through them on your own, uh, please feel free to you know, touch base with me and, and let me know. A lot of organizations that went through the pilot start off by doing a bit of a gap analysis. What do we got? What do we need? What do we need to find or refine? And then that helps them build an action plan to determine how they can meet the standards. So just to give you a, a bit of an idea of where the standards came from, the governance standards were developed by the Accountability Reference Group, which I think I mentioned a few minutes ago. They were one of, or maybe I didn't, maybe I mentioned it to someone at my table. They, uh, they were one of the initial groups that put together the white paper on the standards about five or six years ago. and. Uh, and the, the program has been under, develop, uh, under development for about six years. Most recently, in the last two years, it's the, the program has, was designed and, and uh, we've just gone through a pilot um, in 2011-12 uh, and launched the program in May. So I'll, I'll, again, I'll tell you a little bit more about that. But the financial accountability and fundraising standards are based on uh, Imagine Canada's ethical code. Uh, which is the precursor to the standards program. And the staff management standards are adopted uh, from the HR Council for the Nonprofit Sector Standards. And the volunteer involvement standards are involved, uh, are, were adapted from uh, Volunteer Canada standards. So one of the things uh, that may be a bit unique about the standards program is that the standards are in three levels. And uh, you may notice again in your handbook that uh, there is across the top, say starting on page four where the standards begin, there's level one, level two, and level three. And the rationale behind the levels is um, really to sort of recognize and accommodate the diversity of uh, size of organizations across the sector uh, and, and the requirements uh, from level to level are, are not necessarily extreme or dramatic, uh, but you may find that uh, smaller organizations would have different requirements uh, than larger organizations. For an example, a uh, whistleblower policy might be uh, required of a level three organization, but not a level one organization. And level one organizations, as you can see from the slide, is organizations with up to five FTE employees and up to two million in annual expenses. Thanks. So Imagine Canada launched the standards program on May 8th after the pilot and we launched it with the announcement of 17 organizations that were accredited during the pilot. I'll show you the slide of the organizations in a moment. They're also listed on our website. The launch included a media release uh, which we targeted to sector specific media as well as more mainstream media including a full page ad in the Globe and Mail which recognized uh, the accredited or the 17 accredited organization organizations. Um, the program, as far as we know, is one of the first of its kind globally. Now, what that means is that, as I was saying, um, the founding members were involved in uh, developing, rolling up their sleeves and developing the program. It's really been a program from the outset that was not imposed externally, but was designed by and for the sector, with extensive sector involvement. Uh, 
Um, other similar programs that we're aware of are in the Philippines, Pakistan, and, and there's one coming out of Maryland in the US. Now, the, the standards program is designed to do two things, as I mentioned before, strengthen practices through capacity building activities and also build public confidence. And the key to that is through a rigorous peer review based accreditation process. I'll touch base on that in a few moments. Thanks. So uh, uh, on the slide in front of you, you'll see these were the outcomes from the 2011-12 pilot. Uh, 28 organizations went through the pilot, including Imagine Canada. Um, and to date, 17 of those organizations were accredited, as I mentioned. And six are revising their applications based on feedback that the peer reviewers gave them on uh, their applications and their compliance with the standards. Uh, four of the organizations um, were not able to submit their applications for one reason or the other. Um, but they are uh, able to do so this fall without incurring an additional application fee. And that's something that we're plan on, planning on incorporating into the program moving forward. Uh, the peer reviewers uh, deemed Imagine Canada to be in compliance with the standards. We felt that it was important for ourselves to go through the process to, to you know, see what you know, the program feels like, looks like, make sure that we've got our systems and processes in place, uh, and also to be able to say that we're in compliance with the standards. But of course, we're not going to accredit ourselves. So, thanks.